good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the Intergovernmental Relations Committee. I'm Andrew Johnson, the chair of the committee, and I'm joined today by a quorum of our committee members, uh, committee members, uh, Council Member Warsami, Schrader, and Council Vice President, and this committee's vice chair, uh, Council Member Jenkins. And we have before us today five items on our agenda. The first four are consent items. We have a contract amendment with Fagri Baker Daniels Consulting for Federal Representation Services, a contract amendment with Lockridge Grindle Nowen for Federal Relations uh, Representation Services. We have a change in the appointments to the MSP Noise Oversight Committee, and we have a resolution uh, supporting Medicare for All Act of 2019. So I will go ahead and uh, move those items. I also want to uh, note that Council Member Reich is away on city business today at the Capitol, and so we appreciate his efforts over there on behalf of the city of Minneapolis. Um, so I've gone ahead and moved all those items. Any discussion from committee members? Council Vice President Jenkins. Oh. I'm sorry, Chair, that was not um, indi indicative of <laughs> me needing to comment. I think it was left over from the last meeting. No worries. All right. Anyone else on any of these items? All right. Not seeing any. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries, and those items are approved. Next, we move on to our uh, final item, the federal, state, and local legislative updates. Welcome, Allison. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, Chair Johnson, committee members. My name is Allison Nessie. I'm a government relations representative with our intergovernmental relations department. So I'm flying solo today as my colleagues along with yours are over at the um, Capitol working hard these final days of the legislative session. Um, the legislature must conclude um, constitutionally mandated its work by midnight uh, Monday, May 20th. At this time, conference committees have been formed, which allows for both chambers to reconcile their omnibus bills and ideally um, come to a consensus on one single bill that will then need to be approved by both chambers and then sent to the governor's, the governor's desk. Um, as of the last hour, budget targets have still not been agreed upon by House Senate um, leadership and the governor's office. Um, therefore, it has been challenging this past week and a half for conference committees to um, approve or take action on items that have fiscal impacts. So any appropriation um, items and programs, since they don't know their budget target, they haven't been able to take action. So they've been reconciling same or similar items between both bills, um, and they've been having short meetings, which is, uh, which is different for this time of year usually. Uh, we're in a bit of a holding pattern, but the, um, they're still meeting daily, going through provisions, um, and again, as I said, adopting same and sim similar. So today I will go over the status of the key items we have been focusing our efforts on this session. Um, nothing too uh, new from my last update, um, but things are moving. So we'll start with uh, public finance. The omnibus tax bill is in conference committee. Um, some highlights between the House and Senate versions. In the Senate, there is not an LGA increase. Um, the House has a $30 million LGA increase, which mirrors the governor's proposal. Um, in the Senate, para aid is not continued. And in the House, it is continued until 2047. In the Senate, the state levied uh, commercial industrial property tax um, levy is reduced. In the House version, it is frozen. In the Senate, the 3% charitable gambling tax is repealed, and in the House, it is not repealed. Um, in the Senate, there is Upper Harbor um, TIF modifications, and are not, those are not included in the House. The Senate increases our lodging tax cap, while the House language removes the cap entirely. Um, in the Senate, there is a proposal to um, reduce the rate of 40 properties to a 0.25%. Um, and in the House, it is required um, a study, not a, not a rate reduction, but a study of the program overall. So 
Great. We have a question or comment from Councilmember Schrader. Yes. Sure. Just a quick question on the 4D. Mm -hmm. So the and the Senate version, they're reducing the rate. So that is, does that mean there is they'll be taxed at a lower rate than currently? Correct. So the current rate is 0.75. Okay. Um, so they'd be reducing it down to 0.25. So as a taxpayer, would I be paying more or less tax? I guess is my question. Um, uh, you would pay less if you had a 40 property within the city. Correct, but yeah. it, under the Senate proposal, would I be paying, if, I have, if I'm qualified as 4D, would I be paying more under the Senate version or would I pay more as it currently stands? Um, you would be paying more under the Senate version and to that degree is what we would like to see included in a study. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Next, we have our pension items. Um, the Minneapolis Employees Retirement Fund. The Senate uh, cancels out the state's $6 million um, annual appropriation, while the House actually increases that by $10 million to $16 million total um, annual, which was the original agreement when this um, when this was made. The phased retirement option um, is included in the omnibus retirement bill and the Minneapolis police and fire contribution is also included in the omnibus, omnibus retirement bill. So a lot of work on pensions this year. Uh, housing, which has been rolled into the agriculture um, committee as well um, Senate had an agriculture housing committee, whereas the House had a separate housing committee. Um, the Senate budget target for housing is um, zero dollars over the base funding, and the House includes a $26 million over base increase, which mirrors the governor's recommendation. Um, the Senate bill focuses a lot on manufactured housing um, as an affordable housing option and um, redirecting funds to greater Minnesota. Um, the Senate policy provisions that are not in the House bill um, would include the equal distribution of MHFA financing through their programs um, between Metro and Greater Minnesota, um, MHFA priority to communities with lower infrastructure costs, manufactured homes as eligible use of MHFA program funds, and then changing the challenge program requirement. And I'll, to receive funds, you need to um, have a local business who write a letter to your HRA, who then will send it to MHFA to state that there's a housing need for their employees. So, um, and we do have a question or comment, Councilmember Shea. Yeah, yes. just uh, could you go a little bit deeper on like what what does the focus on manufactured housing mean? I should probably follow up with you with more um, detailed um, as long expanding um, manufactured housing as an eligible use for MHFA program funds, which it hasn't been in the past. And then they also increase money to the manufactured housing trust fund, um, as well as cooperative purchases of existing parks to maintain, to, uh, yeah. So I'd, I'd yeah. just be interested in kind of how much that is to, for um, cooperatives to kind of take over or uh, to mm -hmm. own the the property, I know that's a big deal. Um, and I, I think it hopefully it goes without saying to push back on a lot of the Senate proposals, uh, the parity between Minneapolis and greater Minnesota when the need is very different and the population is very different seems ridiculous policy, not based on fact. Um, and also I think, um, but yeah, I would look forward to hearing a little bit more about what their focus is on manufactured housing while I'm, I'm supportive of that. Um, I think that the reality is they've got three manufactured housing producers outside in greater Minnesota where those funds are gonna go. Um, I wanna make sure that that's parity between where the need is. I hear you and right now there's not parity um, in the proposed language, so. Um, housing continued. House, um, some of the policy provisions that are in the House bill but not included in the Senate bill um, are a new lead safe housing program, um, which would be very beneficial to the work that our uh, health department does already. Um, it has landlord and tenant eviction expungement and public access to filings, um, language that would limit that um, to hopefully help those who have uh, had evictions on their records um, expunge them easier. 
Um, landlord tenant notice provisions are strengthened and MHFA, there's a proposal to have MHFA include a 30 year affordability covenant on rental housing projects that receive MHFA financing or funds. Um, and then there is a proposal to uh, strike the low income housing tax credit provision that was enacted last session that would um, it took away the per unit um, cap on MHFA's um, low income housing tax credit eligibility. So both House and Senate bills contain Minnesota Bond Allocation Act changes. Um, each have different modifications. The House more extensive. Um, but if you have any questions on that, I'm happy to answer or follow up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next is public public safety, which um, omnibus bill is in conference and it includes the House's um, committee, Judiciary Committee work. The House bill includes several policy provisions that are not in the Senate bill. Those are um, gun safety me measures, which were actually debated yesterday um, and did not pass. Um, the restoration of the right to vote, which has yet to be uh, taken up. Um, the Indigenous Women's Task Force, a Cannabis Task Force, and uh, something that we at the city have been working a lot on, the driver's license fees and fines um, suspension for low-income individuals, which would essentially uh, stop the practice of the state suspending or revoking a license for an unpaid um, traffic ticket. Next on jobs and energy, the omnibus jobs um, bill is in conference committee. The Senate target for this is zero and the House target is an $85 million increase. Um, both bills include provisions for solar for schools program and community solar gardens. We've been working um, extensively on that all session with uh, the authors of those provisions. Um, the Senate includes preemption of local ordinance regarding minimum wage, um, which would impact the city's minimum wage ordinance, um, paid and unpaid leave um, and benefits in terms of employment. So our sick and safe time ordinance would also be impacted by the Senate's proposed language. Um, it includes a green roof advisory task force and electric vehicle charging station revolving loan program that municipalities would be eligible for. The house, House Member Schrader. Yeah. Sorry to keep monopolizing all the no, time here. Uh, quick question on the community solar gardens. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, are these pro bills? Are they expanding the program? It seems like it's a good thing in this slide, but a little more detail would be great. The, the House language would expand the program um, and make it easier for, for community solar developers. Um, Senate language would kind of roll back actually the capacity of um, the existing developers and how much they're able to um, sell on the market. Okay, So, and uh, the Green Roof Advisory Task Force, what is the focus of that? I have to follow up with you on that. I'm not super familiar with that one. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, some of the house only provisions um, are a voluntary adoption of the energy stretch code, um, commonly referred to as SB 2030. Um, utilities energy generating resources um, must be free by 2050, so carbon free by 2050, a lot of um, work around that. Um, electric vehicle charging station grant program. Um, this, the house bill requires net neutrality for ISPs. Um, which hasn't been discussed in conference committee yet. Um, there's the new community prosperity grant program, a new metropolitan job training grants program, paid family and medical leave, um, earned sick and safe time and wage theft protections, which um, there actually are wage theft protections in the Senate bill. I do wanna acknowledge that. So. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> So transportation, um, also in conference committee. The Senate proposal is a $335 million base increase. That's not using any new streams of revenue, just existing general fund dollars. Um, and the House proposal includes a $977 million uh, dollar base, crease, 
base increase, and the House proposal includes um, a couple new uh, revenue generating taxes like the gas tax, the metro area sales tax, um, a fee increase on electric vehicles, as well as a small increase on tabs, um, licenses and tabs. So some of the Senate provisions that are not in the House that we are closely watching, um, the Senate maintains Metro Mobility's budget in uh, the Met Council's operating budget. The House recommends uh, removing that out of the Met Council and having it operate kind of as its, as its own line item, which would greatly assist the Met Council um, over the next couple of years. Um, the Senate prohibits trunk highway funds to be spent on bicycle infrastructure in actually several um, provisions that that would make it very difficult for the state to fund any bicycle infrastructure. Um, the Senate also proposes to transfer the Stone Arch Bridge to the city of Minneapolis by July 1st, 2019. Um, the House provisions that are not in the Senate include a the gas tax, which has gotten a lot of a lot of uh, media. The half a percent. 0.5% transportation stability sales and use tax, which is the metro area sales tax, and half of that revenue uh, would be allocated to the Met Council, and half would be allocated to the Transportation Advisory Board, which would have a... Oh, just next slide. That's oh. All. <laughs> Please go on. This is why I can't do this alone. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I should say why I need a team. Um, and that is a 30-30 use split, which is 30% on roads and bridges, 30% on transportation, and 30, or transit, excuse me, and then 10% on bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure improvements. Um, the House bill also includes driver's licenses for all, which would allow the state to um, approve driver's license regardless of immigrant immigration status or citizenship status. And then it also includes our driver's license suspension and revocation reform language um, that we also have in the public safety omnibus. Both bills um, include language. The Senate version would prohibit local units of government um, from putting in a bike lane if it were to move or disrupt an existing disability parking space. And the house language, which was amended on the floor, um, requires local units of government to engage and work with the affected resident who would have their um, space affected by putting in a bike lane. Um, our team has been working with the Minnesota Council on Disabilities over the last couple of days to come to um, a compromise because a prohibition on bicycle lane would be would be very negative on our plans um, to grow our bike lane um, network. So a compromise is on the horizon. So I, I just wanted to flag it for you, but not to um, be too concerned about it. Um, our speed limits bill the language that would allow cities of the first class to uh, reduce speed limits on residential and possibly arterial roads um, is in the Senate. The House has similar but different language um, that would apply to all cities, and it would be just on residential streets. So that's something that they need to work out in conference that they have not gotten to yet. Last but certainly not least, the Health and Human Services um, Committee, which meets the most regularly for the longest period of time. Um, the House bill is about 1,200 pages long. Um, the conversation has really been focused around the child care assistance program. Uh, while not directly a city program, we've been, I know it affects a lot of our residents, so we've been keeping an eye on that. Um, it, a lot of conversation around prescription drug price regulating and one care which is the walls administration proposal to have a public option um, some of the house provisions in the senate i'm sorry house provisions that are not in the senate um, are medical assistance coverage for enhanced asthma services a high, very high priority for our public um, for our health department a provider tax sunset repeal 
which um, again, that brings in about $922 million of um, funding every year that goes out to fund and, uh, medical assistance to um, local public or ship work that the city gets a lot of from. So we definitely want to see that sunset, not um, sunset repealed. The house um, includes tobacco 21, it includes um, the conversion therapy ban, and it includes funding increases to the Homeless Youth Act, the Emergency Services Program, long-term homeless support services, and HIV prevention grants. Last, the um, Senate provisions that are not in the house include um, a new shelter-linked mental health grant program, uh, modifications to the statewide health improvement program, which again is run out of our, our health department receives, um, receives funding from, and it establishes a sale of certain cannabinoid products work group. Um, there's a lot of language throughout various bills right now on hemp and cannabinoid products. Um, nothing definitive as far as regulation, but at least starting the conversation. Um, this, the Senate bill also includes the Taylor Hayden Violence Prevention Grants, which I wanted to highlight and will end on. So I'm happy to stand for any questions. Excellent. Do we have any questions from committee members? Not seeing any. I wanted to thank you for the presentation and all the work that the team is doing. I know you mentioned the fact that the rest of the team is in here for things like switching slides <laughs> and such, uh, and, and so it puts a lot on you, which certainly we recognize covering this whole wide variety of topics. But um, it really speaks to the fact that it's such a busy time right now at the legislature, it's such a critical time on all of these issues and you know I, I even during the committee I'm checking updates on uh, what's happening over there because uh, there's a lot of negotiations happening right now and mm -hmm. we hope for positive outcomes not just for the city of Minneapolis but for the whole state and really appreciate all the work and long hours that you and the rest of the team are putting in so thank you very much uh, with that I will move to receive and file this presentation all those in favor please say aye aye uh, those opposed, the motion carries, and with no further business before our committee, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Sorry for all the typos.